Hello and welcome to the third video in this Basics VTOL series. Now in this series it's working with Ben, the expert at building VTOLs based on Ardu Pilot, Ardu Plane and also things like Pixhawk taking us through the process. Now don't start here if this is the first one of these videos you found. I'll put a link down below to the series that's going to go through from very first principles and then Ben up at 3DXR has very kindly spent some time kind of taking us through how he builds the large commercial VTOL UAVs that he builds for agriculture, mapping, all that kind of stuff. Now this one, if you remember from the end of last video, we had the pixel set up, the outputs were set, some of the basic quad plane settings were done. This one is about installing it into the model and then going through the checks on the bench to make sure that all the motors and everything is configured properly, control surfaces move in the right direction. The aim of this video is to get to the other side and then to be almost ready to go to the field and do the maiden. So again, massive thank you to Ben at 3DXR for sparing the time to do this and to put the time and effort into this. The idea with this is once this series has been completed, I'll take these tips and tricks and know-how that Ben has given me and we will try and build a VTOL using much cheaper hobby grade components, maybe a Matex flight controller that will run something like Arduino plane, um, standard motors and props that we'll use in multi-rotors in the hobby. And we'll see if we can scale it down into something that's a little bit cheaper. So without any more ado, let's go over to Ben and let's start looking at this massive, great big MFE fighter plane that he is configuring for us this time. Okay, so now we have our airframe built and the electronics uh, fully installed. So as you see again here, we've used the Make Fly Easy Fighter uh, 2.4 meter VTOL frame. Uh, this one has been finished, so we've painted it, we've laminated it, all the electronics are installed. We are powered up, um, but what I've done for this initial testing is We've isolated the power to all our motors um, because we have the propellers fitted in this case. Um, now, the, the drones we build normally offer a purpose like mapping. So this is to carry um, a large camera. So this may be bigger than the first time builders uh, VTOL. Um, and some of the other features we do because we carry cameras is to add um, something like this, the Mauk Power Cube, because it has multiple voltage outputs so this will power our camera or our PPK. in this case we've got a pilot camera here link and various other electronics um, our power distribution board which just as a simple 200 amp power distribution board is inside this carbon cut box so this is an additional part we make um, and also what this has allowed us to do is to disconnect our power to our wing motors so our left and our right wing is now unplugged and not getting power to the motors. And also our front motor is isolated. Um, you might wonder how come it's only an XT60 on such a large vehicle. Well, this drone is running 12S. And if you increase the voltage, it allows you, uh, that reduces the current and it allows you to use smaller wires and smaller connectors. So when you're building a VTOL using higher voltage, is very handy for allowing smaller wires into the wing connectors. So what we've done now, we've booted up the plane. We are connected to Mission Planner. This could be via USB, or in this case, it's a UDP over the here link. So we are getting our stats. And by default, it started in Q hover. So the purpose of this, what we're doing now is to test our control surfaces. Um, one thing to note, because it's in Q hover, if I test some of my surfaces, um, there's no rudder. Now, in order to fully test our control surfaces, I'm going to need to change the mode to manual. So I'm going to use the drop down emission planner to select manual flight mode. Manual flight mode. We've got a voice to prompt us that we have done that. Um, and now I can test every control surface to the full extent. So in, in the previous mode, the stabilizing flight modes, not all control surfaces are available and the movement is reduced because it scales by speed. So let's go to our servo output page on our mandatory hardware under setup and let's check our movement and do any reversal. So here we go, uh, mandatory hardware, servo output. Let's have a little look on here. So let's say uh, first is ailerons. 
Um, now, I had um, previously done this, so let's just see what happens if uh, the reversal's unset. We'll move our ailerons. Okay, so that's not good. Both moving the right way. Let's put our reversal in to our right one. Let's make sure that's saved. And there we go. So now in manual mode, we do the input and we're getting right bank and left bank. Okay, next one, elevator. So as I said on here, we, we've actually got two servos. Um, each left and right elevator have their own servo. And again, with this one, I've had to reverse one channel. And they're moving correctly and centered well. And let's have a look at our rudder. Again, that is correcting the right way. That didn't need reversal. And we've mechanically adjusted these to be as central as possible. And on one or two of them where we couldn't quite get them centered mechanically, um, so in this case, the elevators, we adjusted the trim to get them visually level. So I'm quite happy that our control surfaces are moving well. Um, if you're seeing this uh, servo output on your screen at home, you'll notice there's an additional um, output being added. So this saying camera trigger. And again, it's because this particular aircraft is going to be a mapping aircraft. So servo seven will be used by a camera trigger. Okay, so in order to test the um, motors, we will then need to power up our uh, power box. So the best practice is to power down the whole aircraft, make these connections so we're not doing any hot connections, which could damage components, and then proceed to our motor test screen. Okay, so we have connected our uh, VTOL lift motors and repowered the drone. So let's use the um, trusty uh, motor test screen. We're not arming the drone, we don't require GPS, um, and we're just gonna do a very low level spin to ensure the motors start when we want them to um, and turn the correct way. Now, normally this would be done in a slightly larger area, but um, as you may have seen from some of Lee's recent videos, we have we are in our new premises and uh, we are in our uh, slightly smaller space. So for the purposes of this video, we'll do a low spin throttle test um, on our workbench. Obviously, I would recommend you do this in a bigger area um, and you can do it with your props off and feel for the direction of the motor. So I've done this quite a few times, so I'm confident um, and this motor, this particular plane has, has previously been set up, so it is more a verification. So um, if you remember from the first video, we looked at our motor order sheet and we used numbers one, two, three, and four, um, and they sort of went diagonally. Um, when we do the motor test page, they're actually labeled A, B, C, and D, and they start at the front right and go clockwise. So we're looking for it to go around the clock, starting, which is motor one, and um, in this case, it's a 5% throttle as a default. So let's see if that's enough. So test motor A. Okay, so that it worked on the default setting. So it started at 5% and it lasted for two seconds. So I know that went the right direction. Let's try motor B. Again, direction is correct. That's good. Motor C. We're getting a similar sounding noise, so it sounds like they're doing the correct RPM. We don't have any indifferences so far. We don't have motors starting and motors not starting. Uh, the final one, uh, motor D, we are free from obstruction. Also spins in the correct direction. Some things to note on this page. So some signs of incorrect calibration may be that your motor requires a very high throttle percentage to start. So if you're anything in the sort of 20% range, it is likely your endpoints are miscalibrated or your servo output and motor PWM outputs are incorrect. So what that risks is that risks losing maximum thrust, potentially not enough to get airborne, and also a reduced resolution in the throttle range, which could lead to poor performance. 
also anything um, like mismatch calibration so starting at significantly different percentages again will is a sign of potential motor damage ESC calibration issues and will lead to a poorly performing uh, VTOL so we've tested the copter motors and um, we have one more thing to test on this plane so what you might notice in this particular configuration is where would you put the airspeed sensor? So uh, my assistant Lee will show us in the wing here, there is the pitot and we only have the dynamic um, thrust, the dynamic pressure. So I'm gonna go back to our main screen and I'm gonna look at that airspeed and I wanna see this value change. So if I can just ask our assistant to either blow into it or to press on the end a few times and I'm looking for a raise in airspeed, there we go. A little raise there in airspeed. Uh, no, good, excellent. And again, because we're in our um, new location in our uh, pseudo Faraday cage, we're not getting GPS lock, so we are seeing the airspeed and ground speed move. Um, that is normal indoors with no lock. Okay, now on to testing the front motor. Um, with this particular aircraft, because we can pop the wings off, we're going to depower again and use it without the wings and make sure we have our front throttle moving. So let's disconnect the power and reboot. Okay, so we're gonna test the uh, front motor now. And uh, for the safety of all of us, we have removed the propeller. <laughs> um, so we're gonna check again the rotation. We're gonna check it starts at the right point. We can rev it up now, the propeller's gone. Um, I would also as well, um, if we were in a larger room, we could test the thrust, make sure we feel we're getting the right pull with the propeller on in a, in a larger environment. But for now, we're just gonna check it, it um, rotates and starts when it should do. So in order to do that, we really need to be in manual mode. So this is manual as an aircraft. And um, we're gonna talk about some of the flight mode shortly. So I've um, requested manual flight mode from mission planner from the ground station. I don't have manual flight mode as a button, as a quick button, because you, you don't really want to be using that in normal use. But for the purpose of testing the motor, this will allow the pass through. So our throttle is correct. Um, on VTOLs as well, I often use sprung sticks. So both sticks are sprung. Um, whereas a plane, you might normally have a ratchet throttle. So I must be ready to hold this down when I arm it. Um, we are indoors, and I know we don't have GPS. We've also took the wings off, so we don't have an airspeed sensor. So we would get various arming checks stopping us from arming. So I must arm. force arm. One not healthy. Arms. So it's it's forced the arm, and let's have a little look for the motor. So I'm raising the throttle on the front, and there we go. So the throttle is kicking in, and we'll verify the direction's correct. And we're getting full range and on our setup screen and our servo output, I can see as well, it's starting when we expect it to. And we're getting a sort of full range of all. So it's starting at that. Yep, excellent. So I'm satisfied. Now we'll disarm the aircraft. Disarmed. There we go. So. Uh, the front motor appears to be performing. The next step would be some sort of thrust test with the propeller on in a more open environment. So, so far we've tested all our control surfaces are moving in the correct direction. So we've tested it as a plane against stick inputs. Um, we've tested all our quad motors are rotating the right way um, and all calibrated well. We've got working airspeed. We've got working front motor. Um, the next step to do would be to start um, checking it hovering as a copter, if you like, a VTOL copter. But let's let's first discuss some of the flight modes because we're going to need to know which modes because the name isn't the same as um, as an Ardu copter. So let's have a little look. And the easiest way I can see all these modes is in the mode selection screen on Mission Planner. So we're in manual flight mode for that particular one. Now we've got all the aeroplane modes here at the top. So ones you might be used to, such as um, fly-by-wire A and B, we've got cruise, um, we've got auto-tune as an aircraft, we've got loiter, which is circling as an aircraft. It's only when we get down to these ones with Q in front. So these are the, the quad modes, the, the VTOL modes. 
So we've got Q stabilize, so you can imagine that's actually the same as stabilized in Audiocopter. So that is no altitude holding, that is loose leveling. Um, we didn't have Q hover, so that's the same as um, altitude hold. So that's going to hold it tight, but it's going to drift in the wind like it's on ice. We've got Q loiter, which is the same as normal loiter um, on Audiocopter. So that's a GPS holding one, similar to GPS mode in off the shelf drones. Um, Q land, which would be to land as a VTOL. Q RTL, which is return fully as a VTOL. Um, Q auto tune, um, leave that one until you are a bit more um, proficient with the aircraft that will um, do auto tuning as a copter would. So it would do its own inputs in pitch, roll, and yaw. Um, then we have a few other modes, which again offer advanced users, users such as the Q acro thermal is a gliding mode. Um, so yeah, it would be um, wise to leave those ones out until you you're more used to it. Um, so the next steps in testing the setup of this aircraft, I would probably be in a larger indoor environment, and I would be using Q stabilize, or I'd be in a um, in an outdoor environment, and I'd be as if it was a copter. I'd be making sure my inputs are responding correctly as we slowly start to take the aircraft off the ground. I'll be looking for oscillations of the aircraft that need to be sort of tuned out before it gets any higher. Um, so I, I start the next process in Q stabilized to make sure it is a stable aircraft and it responds correctly. I would then be in a larger field where I'd be wanting to work my way up through um, Q hover. So allowing it to hold its altitude and I'll be testing the inputs and maneuverability. Um, I'd also do some initial tuning, which is referenced on the um, audio pilot tuning page. And once we have a, a sort of satisfactory tune, it would then be progressing to a Q loiter, the GPS holding mode. So it's sort of incremental steps as if it was a copter um, and basic tuning as a copter before we were then working towards the fixed wing. So doing a first transition. So normally on a new aircraft, that initial forward transition for testing might be um, sort of aborted. You might allow it to gain some speed and then stop and then progress up to a full transition as a fixed wing before treating it as a fixed wing and doing your normal tuning process and fixed wing, such as initially the calibration of the airspeed sensor and then um, auto tune in fixed wing is actually a very good way to do the aircraft from firmwares 4.1 and above. The process is very quick and easy. Um, and then we would tune some of the Q parameters relating to transition time, um, such as Q um, transition time and Q deceleration time. So these are features that would improve um, the transition and also the, the RTL transition. Okay, so we, we mentioned some of the sort of setup and tuning processes there. Let's look at the actual transition. So a lot of people ask like, how does the transition, when, what, what, what does this do? So basically, um, this is a four plus one aircraft. We would take it off in a Q mode. So let's say, for example, we're going to go in Q lighter. So a GPS mode. Um, you should take a safe altitude on your first transition. So let's just say, for example, on this one, I take it to 30 or 40 meters for those initial transitions. So we've raised the drone up in Q loiter. If we let go of the sticks in the middle, it would sit there as a copter. And the, the transition, or in this case, a forward transition will start when we invoke a fixed wing mode. So let's say, for example, on a first transition, we invoked a fly-by-wire, either A or B. Um, as soon as you initiate that flight mode, the front motor will instantly come on as soon as you press the fly-by-wire mode. So let's just assume fly-by-wire B in this case, so this is the height holding mode. And our front motor is gonna stay on. And some parameters that are important here are the fly-by-wire minimum speed. So that's the point at which it considers the transition complete. And then there's a delay parameter for say default of four seconds after minimum airspeed before the motor shuts off. So for this particular aircraft, this one flies at 18 meters a second. The minimum fly-by-wire speed is 12 because the stall speed is about 10. 
So we've taken the spot stall speed, we've added about 20%, so that's the minimum speed it ever wants to be. Um, we've got a maximum speed of 24 meters a second, so that's the maximum speed it, it's allowed to in some of the fly-by-wire modes and some of the automated modes. Um, so our forward transition, so going from a copter to a plane, once you hit that fixed wing mode, so in this case fly-by-wire B, it will start the front motor. When it hits 12 meters a second forward speed, it will use its delay parameter, uh, the transition um, delay, which is four seconds by default. And after that, it will shut down the front motor, uh, shut down the VTOL motors, and you will be flying as a plane. Your stick inputs will be plane inputs, um, and it will be flying the forward motor. So if we'd use fly-by-wire B in that case, it would maintain the altitude it's at. You would have to climb, um, because it's a self-centering throttle the minimum stick in fly by way of b is your cruise speed which is 18 meters a second for this aircraft and you are now a plane so if we look on our um, basic tuning page here um, under configuration here we have our air speeds in meters a second so you can see here cruise is 18 so that's our um, target airspeed we have fbw min that's 12 meters a second so that's the point at which um, it considers a transition complete and um, would shut off the VTOL motors. We also have a maximum speed, which is again the maximum it'll demand in autonomous modes. Because we mentioned fly-by-wire B mode and we've got a self-centering stick, um, the, the target throttle if you take your hands off the stick is 18 meters a second. And our airspeed ratio is also shown here. So this is something we would tune on first flight. Okay, so that was the, the forward transition. Um, the backward transition is when it goes from a plane back to a, a copter. So in order to do that, you would, um, let's say we're still in fly-by-wire B, we would go into a Q mode such as a, a loiter or a hover. Um, on your initial sort of testing, I would strongly recommend you went with a Q hover mode, um, not a GPS positioning mode, because that's more likely to have a, a sort of jerky um, reaction when you're first setting up a plane so on a plane that's not fully set up so if you're going to queue hover which is like an alt hold mode you'll get a smoother sort of transition it will be longer but it will be smoother and there'll be less jerks less risk of something going wrong um, so once you initiate um, the queue mode instantly the quad motors will come on and your front motor will reduce to a stop and once you get down to um, a few meters a second you are now a copter and your stick inputs will be copter inputs. This will also happen um, as an RTL. So one of the great features with using version 4.1 on the firmware, um, the QRTL will um, fly back to you as an airplane and it will calculate when to do this backward transition. So it will fly back to you in the efficient airplane mode and then it will... Um, transition do a back transition and land as a copter so once you've got your aircraft fully um set up um version 4.1 of the firmware um has lots of great features that make these really easy to use lots of great fail safes that are fully functional um let's talk about a couple of other good features and why um starting with a sort of um a four plus one vtol is better so something with separate lift, lift and thrust. So this is why we, we recommend um, not going into tilt rotors or tail sitters for your first venture. It might seem like there's less hardware needed, but um, with a four plus one, it's much more controlled when you separate the lift and the thrust, and it's much easier to set up. Um, I also find we get great results in endurance and um, flight characteristics. Um, with this this normal sort of traditional aircraft layout with the quad motors added some good features with this um, Which you can delve into once the initial tuning is done is There's a few features that you should know about we have prop assistance We have weather veining and then we also have Q assistance. So let's look at these individually um, prop assistance um, would allow the um, motor on the front or rear or twin front motors um, to assist you um, against the wind. So on older versions of firmware or on different aircraft types, um, 
when you're flying as a copter in high wind, so you're about to do your transition and you're hovering, um, quite often an aircraft will lean into the wind. Um, and when you have large wings that acts as sails, um, what that can result in, it can result in huge amounts of power consumption and high current as your motors try and fight to keep the plane level and um, by tilting it into the wind. What prop assistance does, it allows you to point into the wind um, and use that front throttle to hold your position. And this, this means your aircraft stays level more often and it means your motors are evenly working. Um, what aids prop assistance is something called weather veining. So the ability to know where the wind is coming from and point into the wind. So there's a few parameters related to these um, that are worth delving into once you've done your initial flights and tuning. So the aggressiveness of these features, um, how quickly it turns into the wind, how much prop assistance to put on. So the, these two features are great things to have um, on a VTOL. And the other one we mentioned um, is called Q-Assist. Now there's a few different ways Q-Assist can help, but some of the benefits of a VTOL over a traditional fixed wing is when some sort of failure happens or a stall, the ability of the quad motors to come on and assist you. So let's say, for example, you approaching your stall speed, you can have Q assistance set to come on um, below a particular airspeed. So if you um, got yourself into a stall situation and your speed dropped below the Q assistance speed, those motors would kick on and prevent a stall. There's also Q assistance that can come on above a certain angle. So if your plane, if you had some sort of mechanical failure and um, for example, an aileron was locked and it was banking, but it wasn't asked for, it would be allowed to assist you in that way. Um, and there's various other ways that Q assistance can help you um, to, to save the plane as a result of a stall or a um, undesired movement. Um, so that, that's Q assistance. You can set a few adjustments on there, such as um, the height at which Q assistance is available. So you might want it to only happen above 30 meters, for example, the speed at which it's come on. So that would be the stall speed relative to your aircraft and also the angle at which you want it to come on. Um, we we'll hope this video has helped you um, or at least piqued your interest in VTOLs. Um, it's been a whistle stop tour showing some of the highlighted features of using Ardu Pilot or specifically Ardu Plane with the Q, um, Q enabling parameters. So ones that allow you to build a VTOL of various different types. So we hope we've covered over some of the main features to get you started on your build. So there we have it. We're almost ready for the maiden flight. So join Ben and I in the next video where we'll go through the final bits and pieces that you need to set up and then go through Ben's process for how he tests all of these things and tunes it so that it's going to fly in both forward flight and hover mode, but also the transitions will work too. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.